Okay, so I have a, a student of mine ask me to tune his uh, toms for him. He's got a five-piece drum set, and he's got three toms on this drum set. And it's a standard drum set, so it's got a 12-inch tom, a 13-inch tom, and a 16-inch floor tom. Um, I'm not sure how well the audio will come out in this recording and if you can hear the pitches, but I'm just going to do some general um, overview on how I like to tune tom-toms. And uh, the way that I like to do it that I found to be the quickest and the fastest and the most accurate for me is I take off all the top heads immediately. So what we're working here with are drums that don't have top heads on them, but I'm leaving the bottom heads on, but they're loose. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to finger tighten all the way around every, every tension rod. And then after that, I'm going to make sure that the head isn't bubbling up from the edge at all anywhere. In other words, I want to make sure that there's enough tension all the way around that the head is touching the shell in all locations without really tuning them quite yet. So if I start with this one, I'm going to make sure, like I said, I'm going to finger tighten these, make sure they all sound good, or not good, they're all good and finger tight here. So now what I'm going to do, so I'm going to put my finger on the edge of the drum and push down until I get to the shell. And so then I'm going to tighten this a little bit so that I know that the head is completely touching the shell. Now I'm going to go to the opposite side and do the same thing. The reason why I'm doing that is I want to make sure that the rim is equally distributed amongst the shell. So in other words, like if, if you look from this angle, if I pulled it too much on this end, it would pull the rim, pull the rim this way, and we don't want that. So I'm going all the way around and making sure the rim is nice and even on here and that the head is touching the shell in all locations. All right. So this one's kind of done. I'm going to push on a little bit, make sure it doesn't bubble up on me. All right. So that seems pretty good. So now I'm going to go to the second tom-tom and do the same thing. Make sure it's finger tightened and that it's seated on there evenly. And then I'm going to... opposite each side make sure the head is seated evenly on this shell. Now I'm going around and checking make sure it's not bubbling up anywhere. All right that's good. So yes this floor tom I have the legs on upside down to support it. I have the two smaller toms on just regular snare drum stands so I can reach it and don't have to bend over. So I'm going to go around make sure everything is finger tightened. Okay, now I'm going to push to the opposite side and push on the head over here. Now, while I'm doing this part, here's my theory on drum tuning for tom-toms. When you hit a drum, a tom-tom specifically, if, if they're in tune, you'll hear a pitch like piano pitches and, and specific frequencies. If they're not in tune, then you won't. You'll just hear a lot of dissonance, a lot of sounds fighting each other. But when you do hit a tom-tom, the sound you hear immediately is the attack. The attack is the impact of the stick on the top head. That creates the, the impact sound that you hear. And so they make different kinds of heads for different types of articulation or impact sounds. The tone, comes out of the bottom head. So any pitch that you're hearing is coming out of the bottom. Now, yes, the top head and the bottom head need to be tuned together to some degree. We'll address that later. But what I'm going to do now is because I know that the top part is my attack, doesn't play a whole lot of role in the pitch, the bottom head is my actual pitch. So if I want my toms to be tuned to specific notes or specific intervals or just general intervals with each other, then I want to listen to the bottom heads first because that's where my tone is going to come from. And that's why I've taken off the top heads. So now what I have are heads that are evenly screwed on to the shells. And so what I'm going to do now is listen to what I have. And after I listen to what I have, I'm going to start making decisions on how I'm going to tune this. I can tell you right away because this is a standard 12, 13, 16 inch tom. General tuning that I find to be um, pretty consistent is a 1, 4, 5 uh, major scale interval. So, you know, let's say this is a C. If this is a C, then I would go to the F above that and then the G above that. Now, usually when I'm tuning drums like this, I don't get out a piano and use specific notes. I kind of do it relative to each other. So I don't know what pitch this is. But, you know, if I hit it and I determine that it's an F or let's say a C, 
um, then what I would want to do is make sure that this is an F and a G. So I don't know what this is going to be. I don't really care. I'm just going to try to find a sound that sounds good for the slow floor tom, and then I'm going to match these two drums up to that. So I'm going to start here and see what it sounds like. So right now that sounds pretty dead and not in tune with itself. So here's where we talk about um, how I tune the lugs to each other. Now I don't hear low pitches very well. A lot of people probably don't. So what I do is I put my finger in the middle of the drum and then I can tap around each tension rod. And what that does for me is I'm hearing a harmonic. I'm hearing that tone cut in half or actually it doubles it up frequency wise. It makes it vibrate faster so it creates a higher pitch and I hear that better. So what I'm going to do is tap around the drum to see what these tension rods are doing. Okay, so um, on this recording you may have a hard time hearing the actual frequencies because of the microphone. So let me tell you what I'm hearing. From this tension rod to this tension rod, this one was higher than this one, or this one was lower than this one. And then these two were pretty similar, but still lower than this one. So in general, you want a floor tom, by popular opinion, to be kind of low and growly. But in this case, I already have the head extremely loose. If I make anything much looser, it's going to sound really floppy. So we don't want that either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this higher tension rod, and I'm going to try to match the other tension rods to that. So I'm raising the pitch a little bit to get it in tune without detuning the thing and getting a low growly paper sound. seems like it tuned up pretty quickly. Now let me mention something. Uh, from tension rod to tension rod you will hear pitch changes but across the drum from this one to this side you won't really hear it because tension runs across the drum. So whatever pitch this is, this is likely to be very similar or exactly the same. But that doesn't mean oh well then all I have to worry about is one tension rod. Well not exactly. Like if I tighten everything down on one side of the drum then it's going to pull the rim this way and we don't want that. So we do want to tighten it a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other side just to make sure the whole thing's even. And then I'm just going to go around the other side and make sure these aren't loose or anything. I'm just putting a little bit of tension on it. I'm, I'm, I'm like barely turning this. heads that I have on here right now, they're G1, um, Evans clear heads. Um, they're all right. Um, they're one ply heads, but uh, you know, a better head would be uh, like resonant glass. They're thinner, they sound a little better. So, um, so we're technically using a batter head on the bottom here. This is just what my student had. But I can still tune it and make it sound good. So right now I got a solid tone here. That's right in the middle. And that's on the edge. So now I'm here. So that's, that's what I'm hearing right now is bum. So what I'm going to do before I even tune these is I'm going to go around and make sure that these tension rods are the same across pitch-wise just like I did with this. So I'm going to do this kind of quickly. And just like I was raising the pitch on the floor tom, I'm doing the same thing here. Raising the pitch a little bit. And the reason why is these, these heads are already extremely detuned. I don't really want them lower. Now what's nice about um, these Evans G1's heads is it's really easy for me to hear the pitch. So I can do this rather quickly. A thinner head, a little harder to hear. Because there's not a whole lot of tone that comes out of a thin head. Remember, they're resonating heads, which means all you want them to do is vibrate. Okay, so what happened here is I ended up raising the, the detuned ones quite a bit, so I'm going to lower the, t uh, the tension rods that were a little higher to begin with. Alright, it's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Let's see what it sounds like. Still pretty out of tune. I'm going to go around it a little bit more. The 
this tom is getting a little too high for my liking, so I'm just detuning it a little bit as I do this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a conscious decision to take a break on this drum. Um, when you spend a lot of time tuning and using your ear, you can get like an ear fatigue where you stop hearing the pitches and hearing the nuances. And um, that just slows you down and it can cause you to get frustrated. So now I'm going to go over here. Alright, this is just really low and floppy right now. So I'm going to go ahead and go around the whole thing and kind of do like an eighth of a turn just to get it a little tighter. Still extremely floppy. So we're going to raise it up a little bit more. Sometimes when I do this whole method that I'm talking about, the whole one, four, five intervals I was talking about, sometimes that actually just ends up happening after I do this without even really tuning anything. And that's always a lot of fun when that happens. I can already tell that this drum set isn't going to be that easy. So in this case, it's not the heads, it's the drums that I'm using. So this is a lower quality drum set. Um, you can still make lower quality drum sets sound good, but the shells don't resonate the same way, so it's hard to get some good pitches out of them. Okay, so here's what I'm running into. Um, these two drums are substantially higher than the floor tom. So, if I spend enough time messing with this, I will get the intervals that I want. But I'm just doing a quick general tuning for a student. He's not recording or anything. I don't think he even knows what he wants his drums to sound like. He just wants them to sound better. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that the intervals that I have are decent, tolerable, and that the drums sound different from one another. So what I'm noticing is that the interval here is pretty huge. It's more than a fourth. About a fifth. So I could lower this drum to get my fourth, but remember I already said this was really low, and I don't want it any lower than it is. I could raise the floor tom up, but we want the floor tom to be low sounding, so I'm just going to leave that alone. And this drum sounds kind of just gross by itself, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this up just a little bit. I want these three drums to sound different from each other. I don't want them to sound similar. I want to hear three different pitches. I would love to accomplish my desirable intervals. I don't think I'm going to do that very quickly in this uh, setup here with these drums. And that's not that bad. Let me just tune this up a little bit better and we might be done with this side. second video to follow up on this for when I flip the drums over and start doing the top heads. Um, I don't think it'll happen today, so next time you see me, I might be wearing different clothes for this.